Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how to properly use card advantage spies or silver spies as they're often known. Um, for this video I'm just going to call them spies to make things easier. Obviously there are bronze spies in the game, you know, in Nilfgaard and that sort of thing, but uh, I'm just going to call all of the silver spies spies. So these are Cantarella, Frightener, Yaven, uh, Tala, and the last one, oh what is it? What is it? Ulderic for Skelliger, of course. Um, so yeah, each faction has one of these guys, and right now they're all 13 strength, each with, you know, different abilities. I'm not really going to talk about each of their effects or some of the synergies they have, you know, within each of the factions. Uh, but rather I'm going to talk about, you know, general gameplay situations where using your spy is a good idea. So... The first way to use a spy is a pretty obvious one, um, and this is using it to counter your opponent's spy. Uh, this doesn't need much explaining, uh, you know, it's, it's very often fine for you to just play your spy immediately after your opponent plays theirs, um, whether that be in round one to avoid going two cards down, uh, you know, or to keep your card advantage in round two. Um, now there are some exceptions to this, for example if you, you know, you might not want to counter spy, if your opponent has just set up a huge Igni, which you could disrupt by not counter spying, uh, you know. Also if your opponent plays a spy round one, and you see that you're so far ahead that your opponent would never be able to catch up, then you can often just simply pass. Um, and save your spy for the next round after winning round one. Um, and this is the next thing you can do with your spy is, is uh, you know, we'll call it cycling the spy. So this is when you are effectively playing the spy in round one after you know you're going to lose anyway. You just want to get it out of your deck, thin your deck a bit, um, and yeah, that sort of thing. Now this doesn't happen too often at higher ranks and is usually a bit of a beginner mistake. Um, you don't really want to just throw your spy in round one uh, when you're already too far behind in points. You know, if you're, if, if you, especially if you know you're going to pass straight after, because that's basically wasting a silver card, right? You're not really doing anything with that. You're not levering, leveraging any card advantage or, uh, you know, position there. So it, it's kind of just a waste. Um, yeah, saving your spy to counter spy in round two is usually better than cycling it in round one. Uh, that being said, you you can cycle the spy. You can play it in round one when you know you're going to pass. Um, and you know your opponent's too far ahead, you can do that when you know your opponent doesn't have their spy right, so you don't need yours to counter spy in round two, if that makes sense. Um, and this is because, you know, playing your, if you lose round one, playing your spy in round one is okay, um, as long as your opponent doesn't have theirs, because your spy is going to be bad later on, it's going to be a card that's going to be negative points effectively for you, it's going to be a card that's going to bring you down in round two or three, um, so you can get rid of it. In that case. Um, now the third option in round one is to use the spy to force an opponent's pass or gain card advantage whether you're going first or second in the round. Um, so this, this is pretty simple, you just play your spy when you're able to catch up the point difference in one or sometimes two cards. Um, if you can catch up in one card that's the best way to do it because that way you effectively are going to be able to win on the the card state that you play the spy on right so say you're a card up when you play the spy uh, and you you do that then you'll be able to win on even um so i guess it's not quite the card state eh whatever whatever um or if you're say a card down and you play the spy you'll still be a card down um you know when you play a card to catch up so not too much of a problem there. Um, if you have to go two cards down, that can be risky unless you win the coin flip or already have card advantage. But generally speaking, you want to you want to be able to bridge that gap with the spy in one card, if that makes sense. Um, and this is more effective if you win coin flip, obviously, because you're if you're playing second, you'll be able to force the opponent's counter spy pass into a win on you know they'll have to pass which mean you can win on even or you'll be able to just go two cards up if they continue playing and the latter two outcomes here are just really really good right you part winning on even is is often game winning so is going two cards up in a lot of cases um depends on your deck of course but you know it's pretty good um so yeah in round one there are three things you want to do with the spy basically uh you know 
the first one where we had cycling the spy so if you are too far behind you can just get rid of it the second one is counter spying if your opponent's playing their spy to try gain card advantage or make you pass you can just counter spy in round one and the third option is just going for that card advantage yourself or trying to force the pass with your spy so those are the three options for round one spying generally you don't want to cycle the spy but sometimes that's a niche use for it so the spy can also be used in round two uh, as a counter spy or for bleeding purposes. Now, what I, when I say bleeding, what I mean is effectively playing cards in a round you don't want or need to win, right? Just in order to force your opponent to play their own cards. So you usually want to do this when you know your opponent's cards are stronger than yours, or if you have any you know bad cards in your hand, any bricks or potential bad draws for round three, if you need to fix your deck effectively or your hand. Um, then you can bleed. Uh, you can also deny some finishes by bleeding, things like, you know, Villain Trettenmurth are, are relying on having multiple cards in round three. Um, so if you play down to very few cards, you can sometimes deny that. Um, so by playing round, uh, a round two spy, you effectively gain back the card you lost in round one to take the round, often, right? And this is going to allow you to safely bleed your opponent as much as little as you want. So this is a pretty strong use of the spy if you can make it work. The one issue is, if your opponent has their own spy, they can, you know, play it in round two in response to yours. Um, and that's going to mean that uh, they're going to potentially be able to gain their card advantage back if you, you know, start dropping bad cards here and there. They might be able to keep their card advantage. So you can only really go for this bleed option with the spy if your opponent's already played their spy in round one or if you know their deck doesn't play it. So that's usually what you're doing in, with the spy in round two. You're either playing it so you can bleed your opponent or, you know, you are counter-spying to stop you yourself getting bled, okay? Um, I guess another use you can have for it is to cycle it once again. If you, It's super niche, though, and it doesn't happen too often. If you find yourself uh, in a situation where you can just cycle it, um, you know, if you're, if you're ahead by enough uh, points that you can just play it and swap it for another card, then sometimes you can do that, but, uh, you know. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily the best idea in most cases. But yeah, these are the uh, ideal ways to use a spy. Um, you can play in round three if you want, but this is almost always bad, uh, you know, unless you can set up a Scorch or an Igni with it, uh, <clears throat> or you really need the last play of the game. And this is just because, you know, playing a, a spy in round three, if you assume your average draw from the spy is worth, say, 13 points, right? That's how much a spy costs, so that would make your play zero points. Your spy would be worth zero points. Uh, the, effectively, the spy and the card you get from it are zero points play, which is just very, very bad. Um, even if you get like a good card from it, say you get a 20-point gold, wow, really great card that you drew, um, you're, you're playing seven points, right? That's just not a good card to be playing in round three when points are really important. So generally, spy in round three is a no-go. Some Sometimes you can, you know, if you have Tala, say, um, and Dunbanner come out of your deck if you play your spy, then that's, that's fine, because then your spy is effectively a one point spy which means you're obviously playing a much higher tempo card so in general i just say don't play spy round three very often you don't need to do that um but yeah so the best times to play spy are in round one to gain card advantage to counter spy or to cycle or in round two to you know bleed your opponent or to counter spy their bleed strategy um and I mean, that's, you know, that's five uses. You may say that's not very many. Why do people play a spy in every deck? These these five uses are super important. You know, they're game winning or losing in a lot of cases. If you're able to play the spy for card advantage in round one without your opponent having theirs, you can potentially just win from that. So um, having spy is a pretty big deal. Likewise, if you have, if you're going for the bleed and you spy them in round two um, and they don't have theirs, then that can just automatically win you the game against a lot of decks. So really important. Um, and just knowing these these types of things that you can do with the spy, I think is a, is a good tool to have uh, as a player. Anyhow, uh, I hope this helps a little bit, uh, especially for any you know newer players who might be struggling with that spy mechanic. Um, but yeah, that'll be me done for today. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.